Hi friends, my name is Maruti and I'm the co-founder of Krafu. In this video, I'll be doing the analysis for Dashcat 4. Dashcat 4, uh, if we first start off with the verbal section. The verbal section as expected had uh, four RCs. There was one RC, the first RC was about uh, psychology and this was about anxiety in uh, youngsters. This I thought was an easy RC. This was actually one of the uh, easiest RCs that I have read uh, recently. It was fairly easy to read. It was something that I could immediately connect with also. And the questions also were uh, on the easier side. In fact, one thing about this dashcat was that all the four RCs were definitely easy to read. There was no RC which I felt was very difficult to read. I think the fourth RC which I will discuss in some time was slightly on the more difficult side to read. But even that by normal standards was not a difficult to read RC. Amongst this particular uh, dashcat, maybe that was the toughest to read. But overall that also was not difficult to read. So the RCs were definitely easy to read overall, but there were some RCs where the questions were very difficult. We will discuss that. The second RC was uh, about, I think, uh, global warming and overpopulation. This RC was slightly on the medium side because the passage was not difficult to read, like I mentioned earlier. But I think some of the questions were slightly on the tricky side. There were some inference-based questions over here also, which I think uh, I found difficult. So I'm assuming many people also would have found difficult. The third RC was about... Uh, this was about farmers in Netherlands. This was again an interesting to read. Not very difficult to read. The passage was easy, but many of the questions were inference based. Out of the four questions, I think three were uh, inference based. And I had a lot of difficulty in this particular, uh, I think two out of the four were inference based, but they were very tricky inference based. It was not which of the following options would the author most agree with. It was something like which of the following options is the author least likely to agree with except. So when there are a lot of these kind of negations, uh, the questions became difficult. So that's why I found this particular RC to be uh, a, a difficult RC because the questions were fairly difficult. Uh, they were fairly tricky to really understand what exactly we had to find out. Uh, the fourth RC was with respect to, I think, yeah, language and uh, infants. This was uh, amongst the four RCs, I think this was the most difficult to read. But overall, standalone, this was not a difficult RC to read. I think uh, philosophy RCs or some technology RCs will be much more difficult to read. This was slightly complicated with respect to reading. It started off easy, but towards then it became complicated. But overall also, I think in this particular one, even though it, I found it slightly difficult to read, the questions were fairly straightforward. I didn't think uh, there was a lot of uh, inference based questions. I think there was only one inference based question, which was also not very difficult. So overall, the questions were not very difficult. So coming to the overall assessment, I think uh, this was an RC, which was definitely, which should have been attempted. It was easy to read and even the questions were easy. They were not very complicated. These two, I think, were slightly on the tricky side, informative, mostly. These two were slightly on the tricky side because I think the questions were very inference based, uh, especially the politics one. This one, uh, farmers in Netherlands and all. I think there were too many uh, fairly complicated inference based questions, which uh, tricked me. The fourth RC I found was slightly difficult to read, but the questions were very easy. So overall, this also was manageable. Coming to the verbal uh, ability section, in the verbal ability, I think para summary was definitely on the medium to hard side. Uh, para summary, I was not able to uh, get them correct. Basically, I was able to eliminate one or two options. But amongst the options which are remaining, I was not able to get them correct. Still, I found normally I do para summaries quite well. So here, I think uh, the options were also slightly tricky. There were two or three options which were close to each other and I was not able to pick the right one. So para summaries I found were medium to hard. Para jumbles, I think both the questions, I think there were two questions in para jumbles. Let me check. Yeah, there were two questions. Both of them are fairly straightforward. If you focus and you, you can easily find uh, pairs in the para jumbles. So amongst parajumbles, when there are four sentences that are given, I try to find pairs. I try to find which sentence comes after the other sentence. So in both the questions in parajumbles, I was able to find those pairs easily. So I was able to get both the questions correct. Coming to the out of context one also, I think they were slightly on the medium side. Even though I got both the questions correct, I was not 100% sure of my accuracy. So again, out of context also, I was able to get the jumbling fairly uh, well. But still, I think uh, it was not very easy. It, I think uh, the questions were slightly on the medium side because even though I got them correct, I was not sure about them. I thought maybe this sounds good, so I went with it. The para insertion again, I think was easy. Para insertion, I knew that I was getting them correct after I attempted them. Uh, you can easily figure out where the para that is supposed to be inserted will come in the overall uh, picture, in the paragraph. So overall, I think this is a moderate difficulty level section. Like I mentioned earlier, the passages were easy to read, but in some of the RCs, the questions were very difficult. They were inference based. So even if you understood the passage, actually solving those individual questions was difficult. 16 to 17 marks, I think around 40 marks, around 39 to 40 marks will get you 99% in. There were two RCs which are doable. The psychology one, which I think was the first one and the informative one, which was the second one. I think that is the case. Even the fourth one, which I said was difficult to uh, read, not very difficult. It was slightly difficult to read because the questions were easy. 
somebody who attempted them also might get them correct. Uh, there were three questions uh, in VA which were easy. Definitely, I think both the para jumbles and the para insertions were on the easy side. So, out of those four, I think you can get at least three correct. Uh, five questions of VA were of moderate difficult level, especially the para summary. The passages were easy to read, but inference based questions were difficult. I think option elimination normally increases uh, your accuracy. That is what I always do in verbal, especially in RCS. Whenever I am able to eliminate an option, I feel that my expected score increases. So, I always focus on eliminating options in verbal ability. Now, let us look at the LRDIs. In LRDIs, there were four LRDIs. Let me look at four LRDIs in my laptop. Yeah, there were four LRDIs. I think the first one was a 2D, 3D graph. Uh, this was a difficult set. This is not an easy set. So, medium to hard level uh, difficulty because actually getting, understanding all the questions, understanding the setup. Uh, I think will take time and there were also some calculations involved. So, I think this was not a very straightforward set. This was a difficult set. The second one was about a grid and writing numbers. This I think was easy to medium. I feel that somebody who spends 20 minutes on this will definitely get it correct. The only problem is that this was an individual question based uh, set. So, even if you get one question for the second question, you have to again start uh, again at the start. Still having said that, this was not a very difficult set. If you get this kind of a set in the actual examination, you should definitely attempt it. Normally, I advise people that if there is a set which a good student can solve within 20 minutes, that is a set that should be attempted. And my definition of a good student is somebody who is getting say 90 percentile plus in LRDA, 90 to 95 percentile plus in LRDA is a good student. And I feel this is a set that can be answered in 20 minutes by those kind of students. The next one was selection with uh, conditions. Selection with conditions also was not a very difficult set. This was a medium level set, but this also involved some uh, knowledge of permutations combinations. This is again, like I said, a selection with condition set where you have to solve all the questions individually. Over here, you don't need to solve all of them individually. You will basically get uh, some arrangements done. But this is not trivial. This is not very difficult also. This also is a question. If you pick to solve this, you can solve it. But selection with condition always has some risk. If you miss uh, read one condition or if you forget about one condition in, one, uh, in a particular question, you won't get the answer correct. So, that's why selection with condition, uh, especially this is a long set. If you look at the length of the instructions that were given, it is very long. So, that is the reason I would probably discourage you from answering these kind of questions. But if you, nothing else is working, this is a set that can be answered. It is not an impossible set. This is a medium level set, but it has its own practical difficulties. Next is the DA set, which I think is the easiest of the lot. The DA set, uh, is, this is something that you should definitely get. This is a set that you should definitely attempt. This is a DA set, simple graph set, DA with uh, some arrangement kind of a set. This again, if you spend 15 minutes, any good student who spends 15 minutes should get this correct. It is not a difficult set. So overall, this set and this set, there are two sets which are eminently doable. And somebody who is actually pretty good, if uh, somebody is a 99 percentile in uh, CAT in LRDA, if he is able to get both of them done within maybe under 25 to 30 minutes, with 10 minutes, I think if he attempts the selection with conditions, he will at least get a few questions correct because all of them are individual questions. Overall, coming to the difficulty level, I think if you can solve two sets, you will get 99 percentile. This is the case even in actual CAT. This is going to be the case over here also. Like I mentioned earlier, there are two sets which are definitely on the easier side. One is the DI set and the other one is the prime numbers and a N cross N board set. These two sets that I mentioned, quant uh, based LRA. We always try to ensure that you don't get a lot of clues from the options. Probably we will have to change it. Because in CAT, uh, by looking at the options, you will get some clues. Uh, I mentioned this in many of my podcasts, in many of my streams also. Many times it happens that, especially in an arrangements kind of a set, where you know that there are two cases that are possible. Suppose in one case, A is equal to 3, B is equal to 2, and C is equal to 1. In the other case, A is equal to 6, B is equal to 5, and C is equal to 1. C is equal to 2, say. Now, you don't know which of the two cases is possible. I'm just giving you one example where I'm picking a random thing, but this can be applied to everything. You can say that, for example, A is wearing a blue shirt, C is wearing a green shirt, B is wearing a red shirt in one case. In another case, they are wearing three other different color shirts. Basically, you are getting two or three cases. You don't know which of the case is correct. And you also have a feeling that uh, possibly you are not uh, reading the set correctly. Probably you are missing out on some of the clues. You also have this instinctive feeling that one of the set, one of the case only is correct. You are just not able to figure out which of the two cases is correct. In these kind of situations, when I look at the questions, before I solve the set completely, I try to look at the questions because it is possible that one of the questions is what is the value of A. If they ask you what is the value of A and the four options that are given are, say A is uh, 1, option B is A is 3, option C A is 5 and option D A is 10. 
Now you know that A can be only 3 or 6 according to your work. And amongst the options given, only 3 is given. So you can immediately cross this out and go with this case. I have solved many sets in actual CAD using this uh, method. Where I get different cases, I don't finalize which case it is, probably because I am not able to make any progress. But I get some clues by going through the options. This is what I mean by getting clues from the options. In dash cats, I normally try to discourage that from happening. But maybe I will try to give that kind of a opportunity next time. Accuracy is very important in LRDA set. That is true. Two sets can be solved in the set. Now coming to the quant section. I think quant section like always, uh, I think because of the nature of those uh, kind of topics, some of the questions in arithmetic are definitely on the easier side. This I think happens always because in arithmetic it is difficult to make difficult questions. If you are trying to make a very tough question, you can make a very tough question in geometry. You can make a very tough question in number systems or probability. But making a very difficult question in say ratio and proportion is not easy. That is the reason I think like always arithmetic was definitely on the easier side. We were able to make some questions in profit and loss to be more on the medium side. Algebra, I think last dash cat we gave tough questions. So this time we made easy questions even with inequalities as well as with the linear and quadratic equations. Uh, geometry, number systems, probability, all of them are tough topics and we also made questions which are not easy. So this is the overall difficulty level. Overall, I think out of the 22 questions, there are 6 questions which are easy. Most of them are in arithmetic. They should be answered. 12 questions are medium and 4 questions are hard. Most of the hard questions were from geometry or number systems or probability. Uh, to get 99 percentile, if you can get, if you can attempt say 13 to 14 questions correct with a high amount of accuracy, say around 85 percent accuracy, overall you will be getting 33 marks, which I think will get you 99 percentile. Arithmetic was easy to medium, algebra was moderate, geometry probability, these are the hard questions. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I always tell students to focus on the three important topics in quant, arithmetic, algebra and geometry. If you do well in these three, most likely you will sail through quant. And especially in most of the mocks, most of the dash cuts and most of the exams also, questions from arithmetic are definitely more on the easy to medium side. So most people should focus on that one topic. You get a lot of questions from it and most of the questions will be easy. So it is a very important topic. Uh, overall percentile expectation is that for quant, 99 percentile is 33. For LRDA, 99 percentile is 28. For verbal, it is between say 39 to 40. Overall, if you get 86 marks, that is 99 percentile. Similarly, you can find out the scores for 95 and 80 percentile. If you have any doubts with respect to mocks or with respect to your CAT preparation, please do comment below this video. I look at all the comments and I will try to respond to them to the best of my ability.